everyone. Welcome to the next edition of Book Readers Talks. As the name mentions, I invite the readers who were passionately read books and they speak here about their favorite author or their favorite book. Our guest today is Sahita Samant. She teaches French. She is also studying Spanish and German, so a language buff. So let us talk to her today and see which author she has chosen for the discussion today. Welcome to the show, Sahita. I look forward to a wonderful conversation with you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this show. I would like to start by asking you about your love for reading. How did it all begin? Uh, so since I was uh, very, very young, I think I was around four or five, my uh, father used to uh, read storybooks for me almost every night whenever he got the time. And one of my earliest memories uh, is um, my father reading the uh, O'Clock stories of Enid Blyton, um, which are uh, the... Uh, four, five, and six o'clock stories, which are mainly for uh, much younger kids around kindergarten, primary school level. Um, and in that, there was just, and I just think that Enid Blyton is just a champion of uh, children's stories because she um, has all these uh, talking toys, the talking animals and all of that personification and just people talking to nature. And I just think that she has such a way with um, with, with the kind of style uh, that she has that it just keeps you engrossed throughout the end. Uh, and along with the English um, works, there was also this uh, very small book that we actually found at a train station called uh, Desho Deshi Chim Mitra, which means friends around the world and um, there were just these stories from I think around 20 different countries where uh, there was one boy and one girl and uh, in in uh, Marathi they introduced um, what like uh, the the country the uh, capital city a little bit about the culture and uh, and very uh, uh, surprisingly that was indirectly my first introduction to French culture because the uh, ninth story was about two French children so that was indirectly telling me that this is going to be what you'll be pursuing soon <laughs> this is very interesting <laughs> so yes my next question was can you recall a specific book or moment that sparked your interest in reading uh, I think it was definitely uh, the uh, five o'clock stories of Enid Blyton. Um, mm -hmm. So earlier when my uh, father used to read for me, he would tell me that when we reach a certain o'clock level, I will just be here and you have to read for me because he wanted to check how I read, if, if my diction has improved. Because I was also starting out in uh, kindergarten at the time. So he would say that, you know, now, now you will have to start reading on your own. I will just listen to you. Now, I am the listener and you will read for me. And I just remember um, while I think I'm, uh, uh, I, I really like all of the uh, children's stories that Enid Brighton has written. But I think the five o'clock, specifically the five o'clock stories were the ones that kept me engrossed the most. So I think that really got me into reading what genres of books do you enjoy the most uh so i really enjoy crime and mystery uh and mm -hmm. i think that my bookshelf can really attest to it because 80 percent of the material is crime and mystery and all the other uh, genres would be really upset that you know why don't you read us i i, I have nothing against the other genres but this is the genre that keeps me engrossed the most and I've always liked watching um, crime and mystery related TV shows so I think uh, consuming crime and mystery related media of any form has been uh, uh, a thing since I'm uh, little I just think that the thrill of it and um, 
and, and there's just these these different kinds of plots sometimes the the audience gets a hint who the killer might be uh, but the real uh, the kind of thing where they worked on the most is how we are led to how the killer did it and sometimes mm -hmm. uh, the reveal of the murder is pretty easy but finding the killer is hard so you have both these things just kind of keep you engrossed Nice. So what role do books play in your life? Entertainment or a source of inf uh, information, relaxation? Uh, I think definitely entertainment because other than crime and mystery, I also just like to read um, biographies and autobiographies of some of the uh, celebrities that I like. So it's just fun to read about someone else's life where they're narrating their stories and their journeys mm -hmm. um and then uh and along with the entertainment part there's definitely vocabulary and uh with the um crime and mystery books especially those of agatha christie um uh, i uh, i definitely think that although her um uh, Although the language she uses is pretty simple, there's not something, uh, uh, there, there's no uh, vocabulary that she uses, which is too difficult. You can guess that it's a word related to this, but because she uses so many different words um, for, mm -hmm. for something, you, um, I have this blue diary, which I keep with me whenever I'm reading her books, because I okay. need it for all the synonyms that she's used. And her books have definitely improved my vocabulary related to investigation and people and personalities. So along with entertainment, oh. definitely vocabulary. Wow, this is very interesting. So being a language learner and also a French teacher, I think uh, this goes hand in hand. Great. So which author have you chosen today for our discussion? Uh, so today I have chosen Agatha Christie. Wow. Uh, okay. Is uh, she, I mean, she is called the Queen of Mystery for a reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, because um, I I mean I had um read a while back that her books have uh sold even more. Uh, in uh, sometimes than the works of Arthur Conan Doyle and are at par mm -hmm. with uh, the popularity of Shakespeare, which is a huge thing. Oh. Uh, okay. uh, mm. And I just remember, uh, I, I believe one of my cousins had uh, given me her book of Murder on the Orient Express. Mm -hmm. Uh, which was uh, so she had said that uh, I know that you like watching crime and mystery I know that you like reading crime and mystery um, or something just related to just something haunted and mysterious as my school library also had the um, uh, the goosebump stories and the are you afraid of the dark so the uh, all the mystery stuff has always been interesting uh, even though I am a big uh, scary cat, somehow I do enjoy the mystery related things. Uh, but her stuff is definitely what uh, keeps me engrossed the most. Her books occupy a big portion of my shelf. Wow. Indeed. Can you quote a few lines from her books as examples of what you have enjoyed most? Uh, uh, so uh, in Agatha Christie's books, you have uh, a set of different detectives. And I remember watching a TEDx video about this. Uh, and I and I realized that this is true, is that the detectives that she has, they're not uh, detectives with this kind of grand personality that immediately, like, I think like Sherlock Holmes, who is very tall and he has the big coat and you immediately kind of feel a bit intimidated by his presence. However, with her, uh, her most popular characters who are the detectives being Hercule Poirot, who is the uh, Belgian detective and, uh, mm. and Miss uh, uh, Marple, uh, 
like the so uh, Hercule Poirot is just a shorter, stout man with a mustache. I mean, I don't think you would think much of a grand personality, but right. in his right. the way, he makes sure to make people uncomfortable um, <laughs> without being too much of a grand personality. And same with uh, Miss Buckle, because she is just this mm -hmm. old lady who seems like the nice old lady from the neighborhood, but she's <laughs> actually, her five senses are way more active than you could imagine. Um and from them, uh, there was this line from the uh, book which has Miss Marple as the detective is, the worst mm -hmm. is often so true. Um, and I remember reading that in the, I think this is, this is a big line and it's, it is very, very true that the worst is often the, the uh, most true thing out there. Um mm -hmm. And the uh, and this other line which I remember is from the book that I previously mentioned, which is Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, there was mm -hmm. this line which I think also for people who enjoy reading Agatha Christie and also watch old Hollywood movies, they would find this line mm -hmm. very interesting as like a combination mm -hmm. of both their things, which um, mm -hmm. Ed Hugh says is that uh, some of us in the words mm -hmm. of the divine Greta Garbo, want to be alone. Oh, okay. Uh, so, and uh, this is a very famous line by Greta Garbo. And uh, mm -hmm. I remember when I was reading about her, as I was um, watching this video about uh, AFI's greatest 100 stars, and Greta Garbo mm -hmm. is among the top five in the uh, women. And I just thought she was a very interesting personality. And this was one of the lines that kind of kept coming everywhere. So I think Agatha kind of uh, made sure that there was this little um, best of both worlds for the Hollywood fans and the uh, and mm -hmm. the readers of her works. They would find, oh, she, she has mentioned Greta Garbo. That's nice. So they would <laughs> find it nice that someone who they love outside of literature is also being mentioned in her work. Yes, so true. <laughs> Great. Would you like to share some plots or scheme of things from her books? Yes. Uh, so uh, from what I have always seen, this is one thing that's just the main thing for her more than anything is the setting. Um, and I think after I watched the uh, TEDx video about her, it just uh, really... Uh, made everybody aware that for her setting is the main thing and uh, uh, so when I had done this uh, course about creative writing from British Council I remember my uh, teacher also mentioning that some authors they're just obsessed with having this perfect setting and it's uh, this is definitely their number one thing like obviously they will focus on other things but their setting is just something spectacular and all the readers when they kind of get an idea of what that author is like they're always curious what kind of setting it might be um, and in the case of Agatha Christie's works she loves these fancy trains like the Orient Express for example and a lot of uh, people who live uh, in the areas that are uh, in the areas that these trains are there, they have often traveled by these trains after reading her work. Mm -hmm. Now, they also feel like traveling the Orient Express. Mm -hmm. uh, they also feel like traveling the uh, blue train, which goes to the south of France. Um, and you always have these old homes, which are far away from everything, which just, which just becomes like this per perfect place for a murder, because who's going to come and check? what's happening in here since it's so far off and uh, you also have the uh, you also have this one book which is death on the nile you have so it's all the way in in egypt it's not somewhere in new york or la where uh, mm -hmm. i mean um, so i just think she chooses these areas where no one will frequently visit uh, mm -hmm. Like, I mean, obviously people who love traveling would, but it's not something you would go on a daily basis. You wouldn't keep going to Egypt. So only sometimes mm -hmm. if you're there and it just happens to take place, it's 
uh, it's there. And there was also um, the uh, Caribbean. So she definitely goes for what uh, white people term as exotic places. So she uh, has her... Uh, has all these murders and all these events happening in these exotic areas um, where her, at least her readers from, from England wouldn't be frequenting constantly. So for them, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, it, it is so far away and this happened there in this exotic place. Uh, so it's just interesting all the places that she chooses for murder. Oh, and after reading, one really feels like visiting them. Hmm. True. So among all her books, can you recommend a book uh, that you believe everyone should read at least once? Uh, so I am I am quite biased to the Hercule Poirot series because uh, I uh, started reading. I was given the book of the Orient Express when I had just started studying French in school. So uh, because this man is a, a French speaking Belgian, there's a lot of French catchphrases that he has. Uh, so there is the bias whenever I see the French terms there. So he is my favorite detective. And from his set of books, um, I, I am aware that Murder on the Orient Express is the one that everyone knows the most because several movies have been made out of it. But for me, I think um, Mystery of the Blue Train is the is the book that everybody definitely should read. Um, I see. Because mm -hmm. I I just thought that in in this book it was the biggest shock for me finding out who the killer was. Um, okay. because I had a completely different idea and uh, also because Agatha is Agatha she obviously put me and all the other readers in the net that oh you you you, you think it's it's uh, this fellow right let me put some more um, kind of things around him to kind of convince you that where you're going is the right path and when you find out who it is you're like hmm? <laughs> like this guy because I think for, for this book, it was just completely the most unexpected person to be the killer. And uh, and I just thought the whole idea of going to the south of France in this fancy train and all these different people, all of the characters were very interesting in, in this uh, book particularly. So definitely Mystery mm -hmm. of the Blue Train uh, is uh, the book that I would recommend. And uh, okay. another one would be Peril at End House, which is also okay. a Poirot book. Uh, uh, in that, again, uh, there was these interesting set of characters. And there is one thing that her characters are never complex. Like you can pretty much tell how their personalities are. Even if they're not mm -hmm. too flat, they're not too rounded. You pretty much have an mm. idea what the character is like. So she doesn't like to complicate the characters, um, mm. which, which is one thing. Otherwise, you often have these complex people who have uh, who are very difficult to analyze, but she kind of gives a lot of information either as narration or someone giving like a backstory that, oh, this character is mm. like this. But they're not very rounded. You have a good idea what the characters are. Um, mm -hmm. The Mystery of the Blue Train and Peril at End House. And um, mm -hmm. because I want to try being non-biased, I will give uh, one of Mr. the, I will suggest a, a book from the Marple series, which is They mm -hmm. Do It With Mirrors, uh, which oh, is the okay. book uh, from where the line comes, the worst is often so true. Uh, from the Marvel series, uh, they do it with mirrors. Is definitely my uh, favorite uh, book. Oh, good! <clears throat> Thank you for sharing. Since you are learning a lot of languages, mm -hmm. so you must be reading books in all these languages. Am I right? Uh, yes, I I do read books in French. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have the level to read proper books in in Spanish yet so when it comes to Spanish it's mainly just uh, 
magazines or uh, something simple or just to get an idea. Uh, right. I, but I do uh, want to start reading them soon. There are a few things that I will have to learn and master first before I start reading. Or I think that my Spanish teacher will get too many messages. What does this mean? What does that mean? Huh. Um, and I kind of right. want to get to a level where I don't have to pester her so much. I will just pester the dictionary. In which other Indian languages do you read? Uh, so uh, Marathi is my mother tongue. And while I haven't read a lot in Marathi, some things are definitely uh, like the book which I which my father had read for me during my childhood, which was Deshu Deshi Jai Mitra. That was a start off. And I think, um, I don't think I've read a complete big book in uh, Marathi, but I've read mm -hmm. essays and a few articles. And I do think that reading in your mother tongue is extremely important. You don't have to read a book which is the content of Ulysses or something in your mother tongue, but just you you should be able to read in your uh, mother tongue. Like if anyone ever asks you, can you just read this for me? Can you help me out with this? Um, it, it would be quite... Um, I mean, I I'm, at least I think that I, I don't think I would be very happy if I was not able to read in Marathi. And if someone asked me to read something, I would I would be like, uh, hey, they. and I think it would be I, I don't think it would be a very nice thing. And I and I feel that uh, everyone should know how to speak and read their mother tongue. Yeah, right. Well said. And do you find yourself rereading books? Uh, so uh, sometimes I I have had to read some books for like a project uh, or uh, some kind of research, which uh, especially in the uh, uh, in when I was majoring in French, we had certain books, and while we did all obviously look at them as the boring study material. Some of them were actually very interesting and I still have the copies because they were just so um, interesting and uh, all of the drama and all of that was uh, was some, was definitely had me in, engrossed. So I kept those few uh, books with me. So even though they started off as books I had to do for a degree, I ended up keeping them outside of the degree and actually liking them for the books that they are and not just for exam material. Uh, yeah, that was a wonderful conversation. And um, uh, I'm sure I'm going to read Agatha Christie today. Thank you for participating in my show and look forward to discuss more books and more authors with you soon. Yes, I, I would love to come back on this show. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too.